We welcome you to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta and this final regional final. The seven-seeded Xavier Musketeers against the top-seeded Blue Devils of Duke. We began with 65 teams in this mosaic we called the NCAA Tournament 12 days ago. Now we place the final piece of glass into the final four. Duke or Xavier will advance to take on UConn, Georgia Tech, and Oklahoma State are already there. Let's check the starting lineups brought to you by Pontiac. On the left for Xavier, Miles, Dolman, Cage. The two seniors in the backcourt, Chalmers and Sato. On the right for Duke, Deng, Williams, Chris Duhon, bruised back and all. J.J. Redick and Daniel Ewing. Mike Krzyzewski in his 24th season as the head coach at Duke University. He is 9-1 and one in regional finals. And Thad Mata, 36 years of age, has the Musketeers into a regional final for the first time in the history of the program. The officiating crew, Mike Kitts, Orlando Poole, Patrick Driscoll, with Bill Raftery, I'm Vern Lundquist. We welcome you to Georgia. And Xavier has it. And Vern Lundquist, two goes. Minute, minute. Into the hands of Lionel Chalmers, who lit up the first two teams in the NCAA tournament, there's Romain Sato, first shot. Chris Duhon, who had 10 rebounds the other night, a career high, gets the first. Anything to win, and Duhon was on Sato. Interesting matchup. See if he's offensive-minded. He's been passing and rebounding. Lou all Deng in the low post. That one misfires. Deng tries to chase it down on the floor. And here's Dolman, the freshman. 6'9", freshman from Union, Kentucky. Short. Rebound, J.J. Reddick for Duke. How about that confidence with the left hand? By the rookie. Now Duhon, who injured his ribs in the lower back on his right side in the ACC championship game against Duke. A courageous performance the other night, 37 minutes. A nice shot breaking down by Sato. They're going to have to double, or Williams is going to have a big day. And they can't afford Miles to have foul problems. If you're going to rake, stay there. Anthony Miles, one of the three seniors in the starting lineup for Xavier, commits the first foul, the 6'9 from 245 pounder from Chicago. Very important for Xavier to be sound on the offensive end. I think they're going to have to use the dribble drive. Lionel Chalmers is very good getting into the thick of things and kicking and finding people. Sheldon Williams, the sophomore from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Over the course of the year, a 69% free throw shooter has one more. Straight up full court pressure. They're going to really take the game to them. Duke with a zone trap. Here's Dolman, one of two freshmen in the starting lineup. Here's the other, Justin Cage. And back to the senior, Romain Sato. And I like their idea that they were going to attack if it was there. Instead, settled. Chalmers tries to split the two defenders. And Deng, I believe, is going to get a call for the foul. Well, Duke has advanced by defeating Alabama State, Seton Hall, and then the other night, they extended their lead in the second half and won going away by 10 over the fifth seed, Illinois, 72-62. Now, they're going to run that high pick and roll, so uh, with the first early foul for Ding, that could become a problem. They like to double the dribbler. Daniel Ewing has been assigned the defensive responsibilities for Chalmers. Little quick dribble, jump stop, back outside, Dolman. He puts it on the floor, takes the jumper, no, and a rebound, Sheldon Williams for Duke. Nice shot by Deng defensively. Duhon, who only scored from the free throw line the other night. J.J. Reddick, the pump fake, misses his first. Well, you got to close out under control. Don't give him those open looks. Nice. Chalmers taken away. It's on the floor. Timeout call, Duke. 18.07 to go, first half. One zip. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Singular Wireless, Audi, and by Bud Light.
One nothing. Duke has an early lead with the free throw by Williams. They are concerned, as I think all Duke fans are, with the well-being of Chris Duhon. Bill. Well, when you're a player and a leader, you have to play in pain. Occasionally, we play in pain. But this is a young guy that does anything to help his team. I think he's put the wrap a little bit lower. It was more visible the other night. I think that's enabled him to shoot the basketball. He's done everything else, but look on the offensive end. He is the only senior in the starting five for Duke. And here's Ewing. How about that? Off the glass. They still haven't hit. Now Romain Sato, the senior from the Central African Republic. And Justin Cage. They've got Dolman inside. Now he pops out. Uh, moving Deng in and out. I think Miles deserves a touch for this team. they got to punish Williams. They'll make him guard. Get any sense of nerves by either team in the first two and a half minutes? I think they're playing hard, but this is the end that does show. Maybe you just pull the string a little bit. Not as confident with the stroke. Still haven't had a field goal. We played two and a half minutes. Now Chris Duhon, he's guarded by Chalmers. at senior on senior. Back it comes to Ewing. And they're trying to jam down when Williams is in the box area. And that's how Deng got the open look. Deng, who can hit that long-range basket, misses that one. Here's Dolman at the other end. Miles measures it, decides to pass, gets inside where the trees are. That's off the glass. No, still no field goal. Nice hustle by Reddick to run it down. A little bit of a forced shot that time by Xavier. Reddick's got to start moving to use those post screens. 0 for 9 from the field by both teams so far. Here's Dang. Off the glass. Rebound Anthony Miles. And solid balance by Duke. Chalmers. Little runner, still not there. Tipped, Sheldon Williams. And really not good judgment by Chalmers. He should have dribbled all the way out. Too many big guys looming. Now a sense of urgency now from the Duke partisans who stand. We are awash in a sea of blue today. As opposed to the orange that filled half of the Georgia Dome here on Friday night. Back to Duhon. No field goals, and we played almost four minutes. Duhon up and under. There's the first pass. Different guy right now. Nice hesitation with the dribble in the blow by right to the rim. Throws the defense with the bounce. He tried one field goal Friday night, and that was a desperation three as the shot clock wound down. And uh, we're convinced that uh, in part the lack of offensive effort there or the short point uh, production is because of the injury. Here's Miles for two. Drifting for distance. Well, he didn't get the touches on the box of Williams. Might as well load up deep. Duhon, there's the switch. Chalmers gets back. Deng in the corner. Ewing got it. That's excellent around the horn basketball. They made him pay for the rotation. Doubling the ball. And they covered nicely in the paint area, but not on the perimeter. Daniel Ewing, season of 41% from long range. And he puts Duke up 6-2. Now Chalmers, that's for three. A little nylon, but a little guy. Well, that's his game. Now he can use the bounce to unload on the defense. And here's a distinct difference for Chalmers. He missed his first five shots against the Longhorns. He's been torrid in the tournament against Louisville and Mississippi State. Loose ball. Hell ball. Possession arrow. Duke. Third meeting ever between these two. Duke leads by one. Back in Atlanta, let's join Solomon Wilcots. Well, guys, according to Chris Duhon, those tender ribs of his kept him from getting a good night's sleep last night. He said when he woke up this morning, though, that the pain level had decreased to a four on a scale of one to ten. Now, that's an improvement from yesterday where the pain level was very high. It was about at an eight. Now, he said that the pain really doesn't affect his shooting or his dribbling. It mostly affects his sudden movement, really affects his agility and quickness more than anything, Vern. All right, Solomon, thank you. John Dockery has uh, come on the floor now, along with Shablik Randolph during the timeout. So Randolph, number 42, and Dockery, who has the ball in his hands right now. And Vern, this is a little 2-3 combination, and watch out for Redick. There's Duhon launching one. That is where I think it hurts the most. Yeah, you can't check the guy. You just check an area, and they get a giveaway underneath the basket. Chambers does a wonderful job for his size to rebound. Over three a game, but a factor. Solid performance the other night, getting seven rebounds. 
First foul of the game on Shablik Randolph, the 6'10 sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, everybody said, how do you beat Duke? I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want to have to feel them out, but I think you've got to use the dribble. They take away your entry pass. I think you've got to lift your people, and this is not going to help you here. Don't turn it over. You can't get your D set properly. Look at how deep that is. My goodness. Long rebound and uh, over the back on Luol Deng as Cage uh, was there to go for the rebound, and that's two fouls on the freshman from Sudan. Make sure you vote for your starting guards in the Pontiac All-Time Tournament team. You can cast your ballot now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. And Reddick got that great look. Uh, Mike not happy with that foul call on Deng, uh, but you give him an opportunity, Reddick. He will make you pay. He'll burn you. And so if you're in the zone, you better tag him deep. Now Reddick picks up Diedrich Finn, who is off the bench, the sixth man. He can electrify things. He... Uh, he was a starter for 49 consecutive games, and one of the turning points in the season was a decision to put him in as the sixth man after 19 starts this year and put the freshman Justin Cage on the floor. They've won 16 of 17 since they did that. And this is a good job going stronger, though, has to be the case. And this is, a, unfortunately, you got to make this call. Force the turnover. I'm going the other way. I believe it was Sato right down in there. It is Sato, his first. Laverne, well, getting back to Duke, I think you've got to lift your inside people because they deny so well, so you can get some back cuts. And I think you have to dribble entry on a wing. It's very difficult to make that initial pass. Sean Dockery, he's guarded by Finn. Ooh, I think this might be Williams in the box area. He was trying to hold off. That's one of their pet plays. Reddick runs the baseline, use the post bumps. And he gets rid of his guy beautifully. Unfortunately, Williams tag. Take a look at it, Bill. Well, the reason he is so good is he is. I mean, he reminds me a little bit of Bill, Bill Bradley. Uh, his ability to get free. John Havlicek comes to mind as well. Playing without the basketball, and unfortunately, the pick inside. There's the screen from Mile. Justin Cage. Little weave gives it to Diedrich Finn. Dockery goes for the steal. Finn jump stop. Runner got it. He is tough. Both of them can get in the lane and make the runners. They also have distance and they can bounce. And the first lead for Xavier. They are up 7 6, playing in their first Elite Eight ever. 1990, they got to the regional semifinals. They lost to Texas in Dallas. And hoping, obviously, for their first spot ever in the Final Four. Uh, the sixth man of defense is Stad Mata, by the way, over there. <laughs> he is moving arms and legs, reminiscent of Luke out of second St. John's. Energized. Shatlick Randolph behind the back dribble. Whoa! Show me some stuff at 6'10. Follow, no. Chase down, out of bounds. Great attack of the rim by Randolph. Xavier lost three in a row to go two and five in Atlantic 10 since that point. The key win, they say, all of them, was a two-point victory over Cincinnati. They've gone 16 and one. The one loss was to Duquesne. The most significant win until they got into this tournament was their 20-point victory over then undefeated St. Joseph's in the Atlantic 10. Good help by Randolph from recovery, and I think this guy being vocal helped them too. Chambers got the team together. Cage in the lane, blocked by Williams, picked up by Chalmers off the glass. Beautiful touch by Lionel Chalmers. He is a gamer, and that sets up their D and their crowd. A 7-0 run. On the baseline, taken away, Diedrich Finn. Duhon is back. And Finn's going to go to the half court. No, he's not. He's going to give a runner. And there. Chalmers again. Great patience, Fern, by Finn and Mike Krzyzewski cajoling his team to get back and identify. Nice little blow by and great patience on the offensive end. Lionel Chalmers, when he gets in the streak, is torrid. Had 11 of 13 against Mississippi State. Here's the baseline drive. Dockery. Xavier Ball. Thad Mott is 36. He'll be 72 when this is over. 
Avar Lundqvist, good judgment has to prevail no matter what profession you're in. The ability to recognize no bigs at the rim. Finn stops, gives it to his partner, Chalmers. The two bounce, pull up, Jay. A little nylon, but a little guy. That is solid judgment and understanding of numbers. Dietrich Finn started for the first 19 games this year. Sophomore from Indiana, Newburgh, and he puts it in the hands of Lionel Chalmers, a senior out of Albany, New York. Chalmers, oh, beautiful pass. Great. And how about the landlord? Unbelievable. <laughs> He's collecting a little rent that trip. Sheldon Williams before the first of the year that time. Oh, and the bounce goes for Ewing. Fortuitous, but he is a good open shooter. That's what makes Duke very tough. The bigs run to the rim, and the wing people can knock down deep threes. That ends a 9-0 run by Xavier. Williams goes for the steal. There's Brandon Cole, who's in during the timeout. That one saved on the sideline. Nope, nope. On the line. Uh, the ability to get into the lane so important. A great look, as you said. But look, off the ball by Williams. Outstanding recovery, preventing the easy one. And the ability to knock down deep ones really stretches your defense. And Duke does that to people. Now here's Chalmers. Quick foul called on Ewing. Number five, his first. Near the midway point. Xavier, no number seven seed has ever advanced to the final. I beg your pardon, Virginia. I was trying to say mm -hmm. only one seven seed has done that. And that was Virginia in 1984, and they advanced out of Atlanta. Inbound pass, a little sloppy. Duhon kicks it over on the right side. That's for three, and it's not good. But the tip is. And that's a great example of hustle. You big guys get down that floor. And the ability to shoot it soft enough to be rebounded. That's the key, Vern. Those threes, if you don't have a good touch, start fast breaks the other way. Duke has tied it up, nearing the midway point of the first half. Chalmers. And uh, off of Dolman's foot. Now, Dolman has not been a factor. They, I think they've got to get him to screen with Randolph and pop. He's very good at that. Chalmers, there's the double team. Get it in the hands of Romain Sato. Jumper, no. And Reddick has it for Duke. A chance to reclaim the lead. I would look for something deep now with Williams. Their screen down series and the lock. Reddick pops out over Sato short. J.J. Reddick misses again. Tonight on 60 Minutes, he's the smallest guy on the soccer field. But he's the one with the biggest paycheck. And he's only 14 years old. Meet him on 60 Minutes tonight. And Vern, that's that play where Reddick really didn't get square, which he does beautifully. If he doesn't have the jumper, he had Williams locked in on the block. Reddick is 0 for 3, so also is Romain Sato. There's Dolman, and there comes Randolph to help. Nice. Job. Wow, he oh. got the wingspan, and the tip goes Romain Sato. Not a good play. Throwing it under your basket. Everything was excellent defensively. Great hustle. A lot of people attacking the ball. My Miles got to be careful, Vern. Excuse me. Baseline, Williams, Ravlick, offensive board, and a foul is called. I think they're going to get Chalmers. Uh, Randolph really being more athletic. How about this play by Randolph? The other end, and this is just a mistake on his part, throwing it right under the rim. Gives an easy deuce. Those are assists you don't like to gather during the course of your career. Chavlik Randolph, as a junior in high school, he began to notice a problem with his foot. Ultimately, it took two years. They figured out it was a problem with his hip. And he had surgery on that hip last May, 10 weeks on crutches this summer. Mike Krzyzewski says in the last two and a half weeks, he has blossomed. And Chris, Mike can relate with his hip surgery. Just takes a while to get coordinated. They look for a great offseason by him and a sensational year next year. That one touched last by Sato, knocked out of bounds, 15 on the shot clock. Luol Deng is going to come back in now, and he will replace Shavlik Randolph. Now, this is a case of trusting the player, and also, you are the coach, Mike Krzyzewski. You're going to let the referees know. It, it better be a good foul. Deng back to the floor, playing with two fouls. Nice hustle. Oh, my goodness. Finn all over. Nice anticipation. Rotating down, trying to help his partner out. Diedrich Finn, out of bounds. It'll be Duke to throw it in. 
most dangerous guy is the guy that inbounded. Here comes Reddick. There's Duhon up and under. Not there. Rebound, Miles. Xavier will run. No, they won't. Now Chalmers, pull up jumper, 17, in and out. What a screen by Miles. Got him right to the open look. Dang with a re rebound for Duke. 8.15 to go. And a foul. I think it might be Sato. Let's take a look here as they bang one another. You've got to be prepared for anything. You said there was no fast break, and you're right, but they, you can make it because your trail guy, instead of just taking up space, sets up a great screen, Miles, and he is a couple of quarters to get around. Now, Thad Mott is going to go to his bench. Justin Cage, a freshman, replaces Dolman. The freshman. Ball tipped. Battle for it. Romain Sato has it. Well, they need Sato to get on track on the offensive end. At 27 the other night in the win over Texas. Uh, it's Duhon, though. We're talking about offering it up and yep. being the team leader. Chris Duhon will play any size out there. Uh, Justin Cage, number three. Finn, here's Lionel Chalmers. Duhon switches on him. Whoa, way outside. I don't think they needed that. You had Deng on Miles. Why not use him? He's got the two. He'll back off a little bit. And it remains 13-11, 7.30 to go. First half of play. Entry pass, Williams. Great help, but a little bit late from the top, I believe, by Cage. And that's what they need. Powered into Williams. I don't think, unless they double, they can contain him. Williams has five. And we're tied at 13. A little crossover from Chalmers. Fifth year senior. If he got paid by the bounce, he'd be very wealthy. <laughs> My goodness, he loves to dribble it. Well, you think sometimes he dribbles it too much. Well, we had him over 21 in the Louisville game. That's enough. You get a violation, but they were playing solid, getting the rim, finding people, doing a solid job against them. Under seven minutes remaining, neither team hitting uh, the ball well. One of four from three-point range for Xavier, two of nine for Duke. Well, this funny, guy's funny-looking hat. <laughs> He's having a devil of a time. <laughs> well, the, the guy that's having a devil of a time is William Sheldon Williams has been terrific. Five points, seven rebounds, and blocking shots. He with Randolph are very tough to get layups on. They're going to have to create passing lanes, the little guys in particular, as they get to the rim. Chalmers, three of seven, and there's four of eight. And they're, they're not sure if it's two or three. They're going to look at the monitor. And Mike Kitts wants to see if it's two or three, so they're going to hustle over to the official's table and take a look. Boy, that's a tough act when you got Chalmers turning the corner on you and then able to knock down deep shots, and I'd, say, I'd guess no from there. And that they probably will opt for a better angle like this one. Yeah, I think both of them are on there. Yep. The puppies toeing the line. Well, that was quick and easy. Mike Kitt says it's two instead of three, and Thad Mata says, are ah, you sure about that? It's good to see Mike Kitts to get one right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to hear about I'm that. Sorry to all the kids. Oh, you, you are going kidding. to hear about that. <laughs> Xavier by two. They've never been this deep in the tournament. Here's Luol Deng. And he's fouled is going to go to the free throw line. Well, we mentioned that only one seven seed has ever gotten to the final four. Take you back to 1984 here in Atlanta. Closing minutes. Virginia's captain, Kent Nedlin, steals the ball and scores. That gave Virginia the lead. The last chance for the Hoosiers. Stu Robinson shot doesn't go. Virginia wins it 50 to 48. The only seven seed to ever advance to the final four. And that, as Dang hits the free throw, was right after Virginia, or rather Indiana, had knocked off. North Carolina, the number one seed. And Terry Holland in that video, too. His great career as the coach there in Virginia. And obviously, since in that regional final in 1984, Virginia defeated Indiana, who had knocked off a number one seed. If Xavier does this today and wins this game, they will become the first team to ever defeat a one, two, and three seed to get to the final four. You're a confident team and a hot team right now. In the corner. Rebound, J.J. Reddick. Romain
Jeremy Sato continues a little cold. And Reddick puts the pressure with the run. Sato on him has done a nice job early here. Chalmers out on Duhon. Luol Deng muscled up by Cage. That's pretty tough. That is pretty good. In traffic, taking hits, protecting the apple, and then the runner. I think he learned that in England? <laughs> or I Egypt. think he did. Well, he spent, born in the Sudan, Luol Deng, and the family moved to Alexandria, Egypt, when he was four. There's a spin move and miles for two for Xavier. Luol Deng's father, Aldo, was a minister of transportation in that troubled country, Sudan, and they ultimately moved the family to London. Then when he was 14, Luol and his sister, Eric, came to the Blair Academy in New Jersey, where he spent four years and was recruited heavily by Mike Krzyzewski. And, you know, he, he's only seen his sister, Vern, who I believe is up at Delaware. Delaware she started right. at Maryland. And uh, how tough it is for any kid. You go, you get homesick away at college. He's only seen, he hasn't seen his parents or his siblings other than Eric. And his mother and dad have never seen him play basketball. Well, they will get a kick out of it as we do. Tonight on CBS, a woman who thought she committed murder may be innocent after all. Don't miss a new episode of TV's number one new drama, Cold Case, tonight at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Ball on the floor after the miss, Chris Duhon. Chris Duhon's cousin is Jarrett Jack. He had a pretty good day today. I'll say. 27 points as Jarrett Jack led Georgia Tech into the Final Four, defeating Kansas in overtime earlier on CBS. And Deng's got to be careful. He backing in on Cage. Rebound story, Duke, 18 to 13. That's uh, Sheldon Williams. And there's Dang missing from long range. Well, he's been more offensive-minded since he's come back in. Now, Diedrich Finn, number 12. There's Dang, pulled up. Unexpectedly, Miles gets it. Up and under, nice play. Well, he uses that body beautifully. Wards off, little hesitation, the pump, and then the finish. Anthony Miles, one of three starting seniors for Xavier. In his second year, he spent some time at only college, O-L-N-E-Y, in Illinois. There's a jumper air ball. Romain Sato, here comes Xavier. They're up by one. And they've been doing it with the dribble and then finding. Chalmers. Well, Miles wants it brought around to him. Little guys never listen. Well, over on the uh, Xavier bench, they hold up the play they want, and they signal it in with cards. So this is the stacks curl post, by the way. Okay. I knew that. A nice kick. In the corner, Finn, no. Randolph, that's touched last by Shavlik Randolph. It will be Xavier Ball. But Miles got away with a little Tavern League push, but right here, the belly rub, the bump, the ability to finish strong. Krzyzewski coaching in a regional final for the 11th time, 9-1. and one. The only loss by two points in 1998 to an Indiana team, a Kentucky team under Tubby Smith that won on to win the NCAA. The genius of one guy, Tom Butters. Yeah. Uh, unknown up at Army other than the local area there. Uh, I fortunately, uh, unfortunately had to coach against him, but Tom Butters hired him, stuck with him, and the rest has just been absolutely incredible on and off. Uh, the basketball floor. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski graduated from West Point, was a captain in the Army, and then got the job there and was at West Point for five years. And there's a foul called, I believe, on Nick Horvath, the senior who was on the floor. Interesting young man. He's a, got a double major, does Nick Horvath, in physics and English. And he's a short story writer. Fascinating fellow. Nice feature on the road to the Final Four yesterday by the guys back in New York on Nick Horvath role player as most of these guys are and fearless going against the physics major was Finn I mean I'm afraid well, they call him that fearless Finn or they will from now on if there's little guys able to finish around the rim or draw fouls it's an incredible weapon for your offense and that's what makes Xavier so tough to defend against and we talked about that uh, three game losing streak in late January by this Xavier team they lost to George Washington they lost first to St. Joseph's, then they lost to George Washington, then they lost to Andorona Dayton, but since that time, they've won 16 of 17 
including, I might add, four of four in the Atlantic 10 Tur tournament, four games in four days to win that championship. Coming together, though, Vern, we mentioned Chambers, and then that one evening at 3 in the morning, they returned from a trip, and uh, Thad Mata got after them himself. Yeah, Chalmers, uh, as Duke goes to the line, and Williams shoots one and one. Lionel Chalmers, after the loss at George Washington, called his team out. And then Thad Mata informed us that when the team got back to Cincinnati, he called a team meeting at 3 in the morning and told them how he feel, felt about things. Now, we would have been there on time. Gave a little blow for Miles, uh, which I think is smart. Give him a rest. He has played terrific. Really been a factor on both ends of the floor. Six points, three rebounds. 21-20. Yep, there's the IZ pop. <laughs> I would have like thought that was a hip-hop band. It's like something we ordered last night. Or from Texas, you know, it's ZZ Top. A couple of guys with beards. Yeah. We, no, I went, I left early. And this ability to screen out here, this is where Dolman, I think, is a factor. Because if you double, he can make the shot. A little push from the rear there, unfortunately. A tag by Daniel Ewing. Second foul on Horvath. Duke substitution, number 15, Sean Daniel Dockery. Ewing is out. Sean Dockery is in. It's on Daniel Ewing. Sean, not Horvath. Ewing picks up his second. And Lionel Chalmers at the line. Thursday on a new Survivor, the All-Stars think it's time for a merge. But what they get is a bizarre twist that will shake up the game. Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Xavier's got good control of the game in the sense they can run their offense. And basically it's been the ability to dribble and get some heads turned. Here's the end now. I, I think this is where they can be exploited, particularly inside. Dockery, Harris by Diedrich Finn. When Williams really loading up and they're not finding it. Here's yeah. a little flex screen they run, a curl or a fade. Reddick, Sato was late getting there. J.J. Reddick with a mid-air adjustment. It goes up and off the glass with the left hand. And that was it all set up by his fade. He lost his defender. Then you got to close out and the ability to put it on the deck. Well, when you think of J.J. Redick as a pure shooter, we think of him with the pull-up jumper. But how about that adjustment? Well, he's pretty athletic. To look at him drifting out about half court, and you got to hug him, which opens up entry lanes. Look where Sato has to play him. Now it's in the hands of Sean Dockery. Not that much of an offensive threat. Here's Horvath. Same play on this side. Now the load up. Say goodnight. Williams. Say goodnight. Just a great play, and they run it in a gorgeous fashion. It's just a simple play. You run your guy, the corner in Reddick, off, and then the duck in after it. I mean, that's just a terrific play. Reddick in the far corner had come across the lane. You've got to recognize him. The center opens to help up, and down the lock, the shape up by Williams. That's a pretty nifty shot. Uh, great release, but I just love the setup. Second foul on Cole, and Sheldon Williams makes it a three-point play. Duke regains the lead with two to go in the first half. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Krzyzewski rode that play frequently. I'm looking over at the bench, and Steve Wojciechowski is in the face of Shablik Randolph. I mean, he was emotional. Well, you know, he's the guy, believe it or not, at his size, he's in charge of the big men. Right. He went to Pete Newell's camp. Jay Billis and others, Mark Allery, have talked to him about post position. And his, his statement was, you're supposed to know everything as a coach, but he was fiery as a player, he's fiery as a coach. And the other day, we witnessed practice. Mike said, it's great to have these young guys out there. It's tough for me to get the deny stance all the time anymore. Well, a former National Defensive Player of the Year, Steve Wojciechowski, and he's joined over there by Chris Collins and, of course, Johnny Dawkins, who's been a longtime aide and the star of the 1986 team that went to the Final Four. There's Johnny to Mike Krzyzewski's left. Well, at least there's two guys that give the ball up. I know Collins wouldn't. <laughs> well, that's an inherited trait. That's right. Like that. Like Doug, so. yes. And here goes that 2-3 matchup. This is where you got to really worry about Redick. 
There'll be a lot of pointing. Here he is in the overload side. Dolman hurries over. To stay in the zone. Left side, turnover. That's uh, five. A little ex inexperienced at the top. Horvath maybe not as comfortable for Mike, but they're buying time, rest, and making sure no more fouls. Now here's Xavier. In their win over Texas the other night, and it was a very hardly fought ball game. The Xavier team only turned it over seven times. And here in the first half, only three so far. And look at Duhan defending shot. A nice fake by Miles. And one. The little kiss by the big fella. He is alone and taking advantage. He did that beautifully. He just prepares when he perky jerky with the release burn, which makes him so tough. As he gets in here now, he'll just hesitate as he goes up. There he gets the, now he knows he owns the guy and just put it up there with a chance for three. Anthony Miles, 6'9", senior, Chicago. Over the course of the season, this has not been his strong point. He's a 51% free throw shooter. Twenty-seven, twenty-five, one ten to go. First half. Dolman runs Reddick now. Across the baseline. Look how far out he is. And he'll drag one defender. Chalmers got both hands on the ball. There's Reddick. Great look. I mean, you just can't stay honest with him when you're in the zone. You figure nobody's going to shoot it out there by the GT, the Georgia Tech line. Oh, is that incredible? In rhythm. One of the best shooters in college ball. Absolutely. What he does for others. Nice pressure defense causes the timeout here. That's Duke defense at its best, Fern. Time is called with 39 seconds to go, and Duke leading by one. Coming up on Singular at the Half, we'll hear from Final Four bound Georgia Tech, then Greg, Mark, and Seth start to preview the Final Four field, plus Singular one-on-one -on -one with Billy Packer Trivia Challenge. And Vern, right here, you can just see the defense. They figured nobody's going to shoot out there. And out here, we mentioned the Georgia Tech line just in the screen in this area. But look how far you have to go. A little nylon by one of the purest of all with the stroke. J.J. Reddick. Ball in the hands now, Diedrich Finn. 16 on the shot clock. We've got 30 to play in the half. Well, they've got to go inside, I think. Well, Dolman forces the issue here, but they had Miles with Horvath. They didn't take advantage. Chance for one now for Duke. Shavlik Randolph gets the board. And they go straight up man, Xavier. Not going to leave Reddick alone. Romain Sato out on Reddick. Sato with those 27 points against Texas the other night has been held in check offensively. And here's Reddick with a little runner. And a little soon, too. They got a chance here. A good one. They got Dolman if they want. Then pull up over Duhon. And it is good. He had a 45-footer at the half against Mississippi State to give Xavier the lead. That was in the second round game. They're going to check the clock on this for him, but that's out of his hand. You can see Dolman was at the rim. A heady move, the confidence level. Oh. Diedrich Finn for three at the break. Well, does that give you some juice going in at halftime? A little rub of the head. Rub a dub dub. Let's go to Sullivan Wilcox. That motto, both teams struggled to score the ball early on. Was it a case of good defense or just nervous energy? No, I, I think it was good defense, I, I hope, because, uh, you know, to hold them to 28 points is, is what we have to do. Uh, we've done a good job taking care of the ball, and, and that's one of our emphasis, because you can't give them anything easy. And uh, we, we're fouling the shooters too much. We've got to stop doing that. Oh, good shot by Finn to go in at the half. Thank you, well, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Back to you, Vern. All right, Sully, 30-28, Xavier, our exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Wachovia Securities, Planters Nuts, Sprite, and by Pontiac. <laughs> 